You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Ask Drone You. As always, my name is Paul. My name is Rob, and I am very excited to be back in the saddle if you will, and uh, get back to answering your questions and seeing what we can do to help you and this industry out because it's something we love. It is. And actually, speaking of helping the industry out, you know, just last week we were talking about how the DJI drone ban was like dead or maybe it was two weeks ago. <laughs> that and lasted then, for about eight hours. Yeah, that yeah, that didn't last long at all. Um, I feel like it's a it's a game of volatility in the markets, just up, down, up, down, up, down. Um, that being said, the two senators, one Republican, one Democrat, reintroduced a sort of DJI drone ban. And I only bring this up because, one, this was more of like, well, we need to investigate if they're a Chinese military company, blah, 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 blah. Um, it's not as strict as the original um, countering CCP drone bill from Congress. But that being said, I think the market is going to be facing an evolution in the coming years. And I think that DroneU is uniquely positioned to help out all of you that are listening in teaching you from experience how to navigate these um, tumultuous waters that might be coming. Because having the right clients, doing the right daily activities, your business will be just fine. But if you don't know what to do and you're kind of still learning from people who read manuals on YouTube videos, you might be in a lot of trouble, um, significant like bone crushing trouble. And I don't mean bone thugs and harmony here. I mean, hmm, actually blast from the past. Yeah, I mean, like real difficulties in basic business functions. So we're that actually empowers us, believe it or not, about this at all. We're actually really excited because it's going to be the people that put in the time, put in the effort and know the formula that are going to crush it. And I say this because, you know, we've been doing this coaching call for now a year and we've been doing it as a free bonus. So I haven't been spending as much time in the community, but we do this um, bonus coaching call and We've had a couple of people following the formula that we've been putting out. And one in particular, Mr. Keith Stansel, shout out to you, buddy. He followed the formula and he is now number one on organic SEO in his market. And because of it, he's getting a lot of drone work. And we're not talking about these $85 Zeitview jobs. We're talking about $3,000 jobs. And if you want to get those types of jobs, it's going to be the regular consistent work. Now, a lot of people say, oh, okay, well, that's easy to say, regular consistent work, but what am I regularly and consistently working on? Well, that's why you've got to become a Drone U member and join us for these coaching calls because we actually go over the formula of what he's doing on a regular basis, how to do it, what to focus on, how to use AI to make this massively easier. Because yes, this used to be a lot of work in the past and now it's not. It's just about being consistent. and Which is a lot of work. Yeah, it is, but I mean... I just don't want to undersell that you still have to have some effort involved. Yeah, that's all. to be honest with you, the first couple times you do this, it might take you three or four hours per time, okay? Being real. But that also, I know in my personal experience that I was able to get this down to about 60 or 90 minutes per uh, time that I sat down and did this. So you can get better at it. You can get more efficient at it. Over time, you can even hire it out. But it's these types of actions that you're going to have to take so that when people need a drone pilot or they're asking questions about drone pilots because they're ultimately interested in doing something, you're the name that pops up in your market. And so, you know, is this a soft sell for becoming a drone you member right now? Yeah, it is. The coaching calls are not going to be free forever either. We're going to continue doing them for members on a monthly basis for free. Uh, soon though, we're going to be offering it on a weekly basis. And it's just because if you're serious about being serious about success, this is what it's going to take is the commitment and the consistency. My, my really long point about this is that we're really excited that we have the right stuff to give you and that has been proven over time to be able to help you weather this storm. I agree with you. I, and we've seen it. And those that actually follow 
Um, well, like Keith is a perfect example, and there have been others that follow the plan and participate and engage and then go and do what gets talked about. They find success. Yeah, they really and do. The people that invest in themselves, there's a um, there's a path to success, and that sounds kind of that just that phrase sounds kind of salesy, but it's not rocket science, really. It's really not. You know. So, anyways, congratulations to Keith. And the thing about it is, it's not like he's going to rest on his morals. He's going to ride this momentum and make the most of it. So I have a stupid question. Is it rest on your morals or rest on your laurels? laurels. It's laurels. I screwed that up. I don't even know if I could define what laurels is right now. Could you re- But can you rest on your morals as well? Uh, my pillow it wouldn't, I don't think my morals are fluffy enough. <laughs> if you have good morals, can you rest on uh, them? I think you can. I think you can. I think you're the perfect example. But I totally that. flubbed that. So <laughs> 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 trying to save face a little bit. Oh, no, you're good. You're good. We're back in the saddle. As Rob said, we said that two weeks ago. Uh, wasn't really back back yet, though. I'm fully back now from paternity leave. You know, we've launched more new courses this year and updated courses than we have in many years previously. But more are coming. And yeah, we even have four in the editing hopper right now. So things are continuing to rip. We've got even more stuff. I'm bringing this up because we are actually in the process of redoing our mapping class. We are including additional software. So our last mapping class online, it included Pix40 Mapper. It included Pix40 React. We talked a little bit about drone deploy. So now we're kind of going to be adding more into that. We're going to be going over site scan. We're going to be going over open drone maps. So if you want to learn on some free software, you can. We're also going to be going over Pix40 Matic and Pix40 Survey. And we're going to be going over, um, let's see, site scan, drone deploy, React, Pix40 Mapper, Pix40 Matic, Pix40 Survey. That kind of covers. Propeller? Do we talk? Well, you Not know, really? we're going to be talking about Propeller in one of these questions because they do have a really amazing feature that few other people have. Um, but uh, it they are very good at one thing, in my opinion, and not so good at everything else. So okay. we're really going to focus on the powerhouses. We actually have a guide now that goes over, you know, what software is the best for what deliverables. And people continue to ask me, how can you still teach on Pix40 Mapper as your like fundamental? The answer is simple. You can create any deliverable out of it um, and you get any deliverable for one low monthly price compared to all the other guys. And in all honesty, it's it helps you lay the foundations of understanding how these systems work so that you can apply that information to any of the other softwares and you'll be still ahead of the game. So um, I'm just saying that because, you know, our next couple of questions are all about mapping And we've already implemented this in the in-person class. So if you're considering that you want to take advantage of the infrastructure bill, you want to have a recession-proof business, you want to get into mapping for the federal government, if you go to sam.gov right now, you're going to be really surprised how many drone jobs are on there. It's it's amazing. Mm -hmm. But you have to be qualified and you have to know how to get those jobs, which we will be talking about in some upcoming coaching calls. Now, that said... You're going to need to know how to do processing in environments that have internet, environments that don't have internet. So when you come to an in-person mapping class, that's why we go over these various softwares, these various acquisition plans. You know, last mapping class, we normally do three acquisitions or three different missions. We did six in the last mapping class. So if you want to join us here at DroneU in lovely Loveland, Colorado, and you want to practice 3D modeling, you want to practice orthomosaics, you want to practice getting volumetric measurements, you want to practice just, you know, being the most efficient at your job so that you can crush the competition and you can speak from experience, you've got to join us for a DroneU mapping class. Just go to thedroneu.com, go to training events, and you can actually book a class. And I will say this, I'm going to keep going for just a second. We've been doing subject tracking now for a year, okay? And the subject tracking course we teach out on the lake, and one of the students said it really best, and I want to get I want to get it on camera, but he said this is the absolute best place to learn how to get super smooth video motions because you don't have any obstacles. Because you're flying around a boat, you're flying on a lake, you're flying over water, so you have to 
fundamentally learn how to fly in a different way, which is flying in attitude mode. But on top of that, the boat is catering to you. You are not a part of a family vacation. You are not down in a resort area where you're trying to make your drone flight work while they're just doing their boat tour down to some, you know, Popeye's cave or whatever, or the Blue Lagoon, you know, you are actually being catered to. So when we have the mapping class, the first class is flight mastery because you need to learn the operations and systems of flying, right? Then we do our mapping class. But if you really want to take it to that next level, join us for the subject tracking class, the best environment ever to master your flight motions, master smooth motions in an environment that caters to you and offers the littlest or the smallest obstacles possible. So check it out, thedroneu.com and go to training events. We do have a question for today. Let's hop into that. Hello, uh, my name is Sagari Miettinen and I'm starting a drone business in Finland. My question is when doing volumetric measurements, such as stockpile measurements, what is the best practice to get the most accurate results? And when you make scale constraints, do you do it on the vertical axis or the Z axis? And if you do, how you do it. Thank you for helping. And I want you to know that you are doing a great job at teaching starters like me or even as far as in Finland. <laughs> so thank you very much. Hmm. Sakurai, did I say that right, you think? I hope so. I hope so as well. Thank you so much for your question. We really appreciate you calling in. Man, what a cool thing um, to have somebody from Finland reaching out. We are Honored to be helping you all over there. Man, I would love to get there someday, sooner rather than later, hopefully. Maybe we can do a mapping class in Finland. Gosh, that would what be do you cool. Think? Maybe hit Iceland on the way, get oh, yeah. some really cool Aurora Borealis shots. Oh, man, I'm in. All right, so volumetric measurements, stockpiles, etc. how to get the most accurate information. There are some ways to do this. Yeah, there are. And so he asked, he's, first of all, you ask all the right questions, right? Um, You know, should I do scale constraints? Um, Should I have a scale constraint on the Z axis? Why is he asking that question? Typically, whenever we uh, do maps or models, we take volumetric measurements, even linear measurements, the most inaccurate axes of GPS or any coordinate system is going to be the Z axis. Um, In his neck of woods, they call that the Z axis, uh, axis, excuse me, essentially saying that elevation is always going to be prone to having the most error. So that's why he's asking the question, well, hey, how can I, you know, really go about and get the most accurate volumetric measurements possible? First things first, you know, he mentioned scale constraints. You'd be surprised, Rob, there's a lot of softwares that you can't even do scale constraints in. Hmm. I mean, really, you're really limited to things like Bentley's Context Capture, Pix40 Mapper, Pix40 Matic. In fact, I'm not even sure if Matic can do it. Drone Deploy. I don't know if I've ever seen scale constraints in Drone Deploy. Um, Site Scan. I know that you can, you know, measure off of it and make small changes. So you're really limited to a couple of softwares that can even do scale constraints. Um, you know, if you really want the best volumetric measurements possible, you're obviously going to want to have GCPs. Over the years, we've said, you don't need GCPs, you do need GCPs, et cetera, et cetera. I think we fine tune this to something that's much easier to understand. If you have piles that are, say, more than 40 feet tall, you might want to have GCPs in your map because the mm. higher the piles are, the more prop- uh, propensity that there is for error. So in some of our older classes, you know, PJ would say, let's throw a, um, you know, arrow point on top of our pile at the tallest point so that we that way we truly know the bottom of the pile and we know the top of the pile. That is by far the most accurate way to do that. But not everyone is going to face piles that are that tall and not everyone is going to have things like arrow points scale constraints are amazing okay um but they're not available in every software if you really want the most accurate volumetric measurements you're going to want to use ground control points 
They don't have to be super accurate ground control points. Arrow points are a great solution. Um, using our landing pads is a great solution with something like uh, an Emlid RS2, an RS3, a Trimble DA2, a Leica RS18, or excuse me, GS18, uh, a GS20, etc. But oftentimes, if the piles are not that tall, Okay, you don't have to use GCPs. Why? Well, we've worked with some of the largest construction companies in the entire United States. And you know what's funny is that they know that no matter what with volumetric measurements, they're going to be about three to 5% within a margin of error, which is kind of how many uh, measurements go anyways, that you're always going to have some sort of margin of error, right? I was actually on Instagram this weekend and there's a new app that was being advertised that you can take volumetric measurements straight up from your phone as long as you have an iPhone that has the MIMS LiDAR on it, mm -hmm. right? So... That said, volumetric measurements are becoming more and more done on a regular, easy basis. And do you really need GCPs to have super accurate volumes? No, unless the piles are very tall. Why is the tall? Because the Z-axis of GPS okay. is typically the most prone okay. to error. Clarifying. And we have to remember that the taller the objects are, the more prone that they're going to be to error as well. So that being said... What is the most accurate way to measure volumetrics? You really want to have a minimum of five GCPs. You want to lay them out like legs of a table for distribution. You want to have them out at varying altitudes. If your piles are taller than, say, 40 feet, put one at the top of the pile. Okay? Hmm. That's going to be really, really, really important. Um, and then, in all honesty, here's a story. So, in a mapping class from last September there is a landscape supply company next to our office. And I played a dirty trick to play a point or to prove a point to my students about the accuracy of these volumetrics. So we had five GCPs out. We mapped as about 40 acres and our office, their entire site, and then a little bit of the um, field that's over here. And I called over to the landscape supply company and I said, hey, um, I would like to purchase 3,005 cubic yards of your compost because we had just measured the compost in class that was the value that it came up as right and so i call the landscape supply company and say hey this is what i want blah 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 he's like give me a minute i need to go look at our inventory to see if we have enough to give you he came back to me and do you know how much they had rob Three thousand and fifteen. No, they had two thousand nine hundred and ninety seven cubic yards so i was off by eight cubic yards wow so, so when you can i'm impressed he knew yeah, I was impressing you too. <laughs> Actually, I wonder how they knew that. Well, and then I told them what we were doing. I was like, yeah, it's drone you, your next door neighbor. I'm just like uh, trying to prove a point to our students about the accuracy of volumetric measurements. And he even joked, he's like, maybe you should come over on a monthly basis and measure everything. <laughs> so, um, so when we talk about really getting into the fine tuning of how do you get the most accurate measurements, uh, the most accurate volumetric measurements over large scale quarries and whatnot, hmm. that's where you're going to want to get into something like a wing tra. Because if it's super big and you don't have the space for arrow points, you don't want to throw 50 of them out. That takes too much time. That's where wing tra's PPK system works so well, where you literally download all your photos, throw it into wing tra hub. You look at the nearest Cores Tower. So you go to noaa.opus.gov. You pull up the nearest Cores Tower that has a one minute sampling set. And you essentially say, hey, I'm going to download the data from the time that we flew. You literally throw that Rhinex file into Wingtra Hub. It's going to geo reference all of your photos. And then you just straight process that. And there are no GCPs. That is the ultimate efficient, super fast for super large area doing volumetric measurements. But I really kind of went down a multi stage rabbit hole there. Well, I think you're so. answering the question in multiple forms and in multiple levels and that's great i mean obviously something like the wing is going to be a larger investment it is well when you think about if there really is going to be a drone ban or a dji ban and we have to get american you're looking at something like a free fly astro or a skydio in that sense i'm going to take the free fly every day of the week just because you got the great video the amazing photos it's a true platform i'm not paying five grand a year to to do 3D maps. So, you know, you're going to be spending 30 grand with that. And a Wingtra is what, 36 or 38? I can't remember what Trent said they were. 
But so, for the larger area, you're still going to need the Wingtra over the FreeFly, right? Yes, but the FreeFly has such a large camera sensor. Um, and the thing so you is... you can go higher. You can cover go... Cover more ground faster. Yeah, you absolutely can. Um, and I will say that, um, not only that, but here's the thing with Wingtra, you're really only making really good 2d maps. The 3d, mm. they claim that their oblique camera is great. It's awful. Um, I, if I want to do anything 3d related, the Astro is going to crush every other drone. And the thing is, you know, Skydio does really amazing with 3d scan. Like the, it's incredible what it can do with a car accident, but it took three minutes for the Astro to fly it and it took 22 minutes for the Skydio to fly it. Hmm. Wow. So That's you're, a massive difference. Yeah. Obviously. Yeah. But if you're just doing a uh, stockpile, for example, and there's large fields of stockpile measurements that you're trying to do, then the, you don't, that doesn't matter in terms of the wing not doing 3D very well. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Well, and that brings up a good point, Rob, which is like, you know, what's the best acquisition path to do volumetric measurements? You're going to want to do a single grid. You're going to want to do nadir based imagery only. You're going to ha want to have a high level of overlap, 75, 75 minimum. You know, with the Mavic 3 Enterprise, the whole issue has been this dewarping stuff. Do I have dewarping on? Do I have dewarping off? Well, now the softwares are calibrated to dewarp the images natively. So, you know, it's a totally different realm than it was even just a year ago, dude. It's crazy. So, yeah. I'm just going to sit here and go, drone, go map. <laughs> this is what I need to know. <laughs> and that's why, Rob, you are the perfect avatar for a battery babysitter. <laughs> Proudly. Uh, <laughs> that's what we call it in mapping anyway. Yeah. You know? <laughs> well, but you do absolutely, obviously, still have to understand kind of the purpose behind what you're doing. There's some education you still need to have. Yeah. To do it well. Absolutely. Which, by the well. way, you know, even speaking Ma Mavic 3 Enterprise, one thing I'm really happy to see is that DJI added a parameter to do a battery test when you start automated flight missions. Mm -hmm. So, frankly speaking, um, I, you know, I got to be honest with you and just say that DJI is really listening to the cohort of population you know, them deleting the security issue right before the drone ban. Like they're really trying to save face right now and pilots are ultimately winning. Yeah. So well, I hope they do win. I hope they win the, the war and not just a couple battles. Yeah. Yeah. We win the war and not just a couple battles. Yeah. I couldn't agree more. But anyways, well, I um, hope that answers your question. Anything else you'd like to add to the end of that to uh, fill in or do you think that's kind of getting him some solid foundations to kind of maybe move forward from there. No, we're going to do another show right after this talking about the best softwares for volumetric measurements. Um, there are some clear winners here, and it really depends on what type of volumes that you're doing for what type of company. So we're going to keep that to a different show. What kind show. of deliverables, things like that? Yeah, and you know, a quarry is going to have very different deliverables mm. than like a construction company. So uh, we're going to kind of talk about that. And we're also going to talk about integrations cool. with construction equipment because certain softwares do that others don't um so we're going to talk all about that love these questions though if you have these questions go to astronu.com and ultimately if you want to gain the experience and you want to gain the confidence in answering these mapping questions for your clients, then you've got to join us for a DroneU mapping class. Because again, at DroneU, we go above and beyond flight school because we actually teach from experience. It's not just part 107. It's operating under part 107 and it's operating with confidence so that no matter what, you can always get the job done when your competition can't. Join us, thedroneu.com.